My name is Lila Rose, and I'm 34. I'm a wife and a mom, and the founder of Live Action, and a podcaster. Ladies, I'm sure you wouldn't want to marry some guy and then find out he had a two and a half inch penis, right? No. See? Yeah, you have to see it first. There's no I think way. it yeah. depends on like your view of the person, because if our, if our view of the person is, what can they give me, like in terms of immediate sexual gratification, mm. as opposed to, is this someone that I want to choose to love, because I think love is a choice, and someone that I would see raising a family with one day and I could be with together for life. And then you figure out sex together and you can keep optimizing your sex by loving each other more and more and more. But ultimately, it's a love is a choice, I believe, and it's one that is a gift of yourself and right. you receive the gift of the other person. There's a statistic I saw recently about um, divorce, and it was that 56% of divorces list pornography use of one of the partners as one of the top reasons. So like to Rusland's point, um, you know, there's a lot of, at, net large at our, in our society, there's a lot of harm that, that porn does to families, to marriages, and then the top site that um, trafficked victims are at, according to the data, is porn show sites, meaning you're going to find a lot of trafficking victims involved in pornography. So I think, you know, to Ruslan's point, just looking at the net large impact on society, we see a lot of that negative impact uh, that pornography has. I mean, or the fact that a lot of the folks consuming it are underage, and I don't think we'd want any too. kids to consume this. Can I say something? On that. Sure. Um, besides for the underage thing, just to go back on your point, I think if people are watching porn, it's because their husband or wife or spouse or significant other isn't gratifying them properly, and that's why they're looking other ways to do it. So, like, well, it's and not really like the porn interest industry. I think it's the chicken, well, not the all, egg. I think it's yeah. the other way around. It's actually. Well, unfortunately, a lot of the porn, there's a lot of extreme stuff that happens in a lot of pornography, and so yeah, the person might be kind of acclimated to want certain ex more extreme things. The average age of entry for people who use porn, not even addictively necessarily, but kind of regular use at least, is 13 years old. So that's typically when, you know, usually a young boy, but sometimes young girls will fall into it or earlier. And that's just the stat. And you know, in Utah, as an example, um, they banned porn for underage kids. You had to get age verified. And the biggest porn company in the world pulled out of Utah and said, we're not even going to do business there anymore because so many of their clients were underage. And they didn't want to have to deal with that. So I mean, knowing that there are so many young eyes on the internet, you know, back to the kids, because I know you said, said, well, you know, the kids is one, one way you can bring the conversation, but there are so many young children on the internet. That's up to What's the parents. Yeah. The parents shouldn't be giving but the kids iPads. I hate when I go out and I see parents and kids out to dinner and the kids are on iPads and their phones and stuff. Like, I, will, I would never let my kids have but you're, iPhones it, but you're and stuff like that. But you're creating pornography and you're saying... I'm you don't actually, what I think, it. though... Is I have a reality TV show with my well, boyfriend at the time, now ex. If you want to pay to see it, you pay to see it. I don't care. But it's pornography, mm -hmm. right? I mean, uh, it's the same. Like, we have rated our movies. We make content that kids aren't supposed to see all the time. Are we not yeah. supposed to make it because they're accessing it? Like, there should be mm -hmm. things put in place so that they don't access it. And, like, you, I mean, if you don't want your kid to go on the internet and by themselves in their bedroom, like don't give them access to the tools that let them see those things. I don't plan on giving my kid a phone until they're like 16 years old. Exactly. But, but you're, putting, you're like, putting something out there in the world that you think is so harmful. Why would you keep putting it out there? I, I don't think what I'm doing is harmful because I, it, you have to be 18 mm -hmm. to see what I'm doing. Uh, would you guys like start a campaign to demand that OnlyFans and Pornhub does that? Since you are yeah, I'm fine with that. I don't. I don't so, think kids should be watching porn. I would you work for like, for example, Utah's law that says that there needs to be real age verification, and so Pornhub ID pulled, verification. Pornhub left yeah, the state. The, I, would you advocate for that federally? Yeah. Do you think it's works. fair to demand the standard of parents when we're creating this very pornified society with tons I, of porn I everywhere? Think, yes, to parents, demand that parents can somehow magically insulate their children from the extreme pornification the that's accelerating in our society. The only the responsibility parents have is to parent their children, protect their children. But should we as so a society help parents? Children by can't society get a get air get an an Apple phone, get a computer. They cannot pay for those things themselves unless their parents are providing it. 
But should we parents? A, yes, I think but parents should we need take to parent responsibility. Better. Should we take responsibility yes. to help families and parents at large do better for their kids by not adding to the toxicity out I, there that is you know what my fans kids. aren't kids my fans How do you are because I know who they are because I'm, I'm in there every day talking to these have people have you seen their IDs I know who they are they're unhappy married men that are afraid to get divorced because they made a commitment and they're scared and they've they don't know what to do. But how and they, they're not, they're they're not being get satisfied. A card and buy an OnlyFans but membership. do you think it's yeah, healthy exactly. for them? You know? Do you think it's healthy for those men to be I do in not, that situation cheating on no, their wife unhappy? I, I, I don't. Then why but it's not benefiting but them besides this is you the thing. financially? They should not have entered into that commitment in the first place. I that is a bigger issue what way above saying. me. I understand. And what it's you're not saying. gonna stop with me. But let me ask. Marriage is a okay, big final commitment. Final thought, Isabella. Then we're going to. Why move would on. you commit to a man or a woman you want one thing. if okay. you weren't fully committed? I I agree with that. But why would we? I think we each have a personal responsibility to do good, right? And so, if it's not if it's hurting kids, if it's hurting couples that are on the rocks, if it's hurting addicts, if it's hurting these different people, why would we continue it, to be a part of it? No, but it's not hurting them. It's them choosing. Everyone has choices in life, of right? Of course, but are Every we Every single helping, person can choose. Are we helping or hurting those people that have choices? They're going to do it no matter what. If I'm in it, if they're in it, they're going to do it no matter what. It sounds like what a drug dealer could say. You mm-hmm. know, they're going to do drugs no matter what. Yes, so everyone's going to do drugs no matter what. I do think that it is um, inconsistent for a man to demand sexual purity from a woman and not demand it from himself and I think that we're seeing that a little bit because it's like okay this woman supposedly has slept with other men I mean there's no like I don't know about proof of that but they're saying that she has but it's not like Dylan is saying hey I want to stand for mm-hmm. you know self-control and I'm going to be a man it, instead of they're claiming that part of being a man is being promiscuous that's typically the, the thought process and I think that's totally untrue I mean I think part of being a man and part of being a virtuous woman is total self-control and directing your energy towards good things and choosing good things and in a relationship that is includes choosing fidelity and choosing honor and choosing commitment so I kind of agree with your take in that I think it's inconsistent of him to be doing that when he I himself isn't trying like, to live that way at least that like, he hasn't said that or he isn't you need to kind of way. date people to figure out like what you are into and what you're willing to put up with and not put up with. I know you say love is a choice, so in mm-hmm. your position, there could be an arranged marriage at 13, and those people just need it wouldn't to be a choice, then, but to, it wouldn't be a choice if it was arranged. But if they, the, if they committed to get married to each other and they do get married, then they have to still choose to love each other, if right? If they fully choose it, I don't think they could choose at 13 or 15. Okay, so let's say young. it was 18, and they just they're like, let's get hitched because we want to fuck. Yeah, well, I don't what know. What happens about, then? If you get hitched just to have sex, I think that's going to be a problem for you. You should get married to yes. Yes, you want to be intimate with the person. You want to give your body to them and receive their body. But it has to be more than just physicality. It's about your spirituality. It's about your lifelong plan of what we're going to do together. We're going to create something beautiful together, a family. So marriage isn't just about sex. Sex is super important, but it's not just about sex. For example, like if one of you had an injury, right, and you, God forbid, couldn't have sex, would that make you, the other person, love the other person less? No. No. Would you still stay together? Yeah. What kind of injury? (laughs) <laughs> an, injury that, an injury that prevented at least for an, an indefinite amount of time you being able to be sexually intimate I, here's, the, here's the scenario I'll give you at least six months here's the, here's the oh, scenario but after six months you, you'd cut her off I am out of here no I'm just kidding I'm gonna I'm I'm hold you down I have a flashlight I, I have a scenario for you Adam but that's beautiful you mean you'd stay together regardless of like your physical problems you, you oh, would yeah. be committed to each other I think you'd leave me if I got fat hell no we got a baby <laughs> together I'm, I'm sticking around no matter what it's, uh, it's like we had that communal experience of banging strippers together and I swear to God the rest of our time together we were so close and then once I started seeing her and we kind of started having those experiences like I think you would really be surprised at how the level of trust that it takes to involve somebody else in your relationship now I'm not saying it's always easy or smooth because obviously sometimes you'll have girls you know lying on you or like you know creating weird narratives or just doing strange stuff in general but I do think that when it works it can be like a very uh transcendent experience for a couple. I think you're you're kind of making the point, which I agree with, that it's very high risk, right? Like there's, it can get very toxic quickly. Like even the 
guy that you were talking about earlier, you're not really sure if you're texting with him. Like after the scene that you did, there I mean, was a lot of... it's not for everybody. I think, like I'm not, we don't mm-hmm. walk around talking about what we do with sex and trying to encourage other people to do it. You know, like I'm not saying go let your wife sleep with someone else. It's really good for your relationship. You definitely do it. Like, I don't think it's for everybody. I don't think everybody can handle it. We can only do this because our relationship is in a really good place. If our relationship was in a bad place, threesomes everything's off the table because we're not connected yeah. so we can't open up ourselves to somebody else but your most important i would i'm gonna guess your most important sort of focus is protecting your relationship yeah, is that absolutely. the case okay so if that's the case why would you kind of constantly put your relationship on the foot of the, on the edge of the cliff again the, and again and again the reward is is like the risk is there but when you actually Thanks, have the check. experience it makes our connection stronger when that person leaves. What so if you it just, adds to our experience. What if you our, just our fully invested in each other and you're like, we're going to find the highs and the lows together and keep this exclusive to us. Have you considered that? Have you tried that? Seven years, I feel like we've probably felt a large percentage of the highs and lows, you know? But also like what we do... I mean, do, sexually, like keeping that intimate for yourselves. Like, have you given that a year? We're, like, we're going to just do... We're just going to be together. Cut out other people. This is just for us again. Or maybe for the first time. It's not for the first time. I mean, uh, we've had we've gone many months without doing things with other people. Yeah, but it's not like a huge just, deal to us yeah, at this it's not point. A big deal. Like honestly, even when I met her and I was still single, like I was first starting to sort of like get to the level of clout when I started seeing her that I was having random girls come into my DMs and want to like come over with their friend and hook up. And you know, when I started seeing her, it was almost like kind of hard for me to let go of the filthy lifestyle that I had been living. But now the perspective I have on like group sex and stuff is that I absolutely don't give a shit. I, if I would be totally fine being in a relationship with her. I've one-on-one. offered him to go sleep with girls without me. Like if I have a sore throat, I'm like, I don't want to go to set today. And he's like, no, 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 let's just cancel. Like I'd rather do it with you. I'd rather play Pokemon Go or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, so the statistic is over 90% of uh, non-monogamous relationships end up in separation or divorce. 92. To 92%. 92%. So, you know, I, it's kind of that edge of the cliff thing. So the question is, why does body count matter? Or does it matter? It matter I think yes. I think that it's completely understandable for someone who has chose, tried to choose virtue and self-control to want that in their future spouse. I completely understand that. I think for anybody who's lived sort of a more promiscuous past who chooses virtue and says, I don't want to do that anymore. I want to change my life. I think there's a future for that person. So I don't think having a body camp uh, count in your past means that you can't have a future. But I also understand and, and appreciate that people that are trying to live virtue want to be with somebody who shares their values. I do think critical. that if you guys did, if you did that and you're like, I'm done with, you know, this, the porn world. Greatest story arc. I know. And I'm going to be like, a man, like you said, a man of God and you stayed with Lena and you just, oh, stay together yeah, of course. You're very hard together. That's and, a possibility. And really focused on your family, raising your kids. I think it would set an incredible example. It would probably help many people realize that the lifestyle they're in with porn is harmful to see two people leave that industry and say no we're going to build something beautiful and secure and, and committed Wait, together well, why are they I building something incredible. secure and beautiful if a guy right was now. with 100 girls probably not okay he was with 300 before I started dating him that's see, why I'm like is there something fucked up about me that I literally cared this much I was wilding yeah like in retrospect I don't know what the hell I was doing like I was just really trying to fill this hole in my heart with just fucking as many random girls as I could and then once I got into a relationship Relationship and felt like I kind of shook off that whole mentality. I definitely did feel a lot better. But what happened after she fucked you? Did you stay with her? Some of them, I stayed with them for a few more weeks. But do you think that? Do you think that experience says something? Like even the way women are wired, like you said, like a woman needs to really typically get to know the man. Like, and I mean, that's the power of a marriage: is you're really committed. You're going to see what works for each other sexually. So there's this like hedge of protection around your sex life, which is this beautiful thing. It opens all these opportunities for you to really explore yeah. together. But don't you think that says something about morality? Like our bodies say something actually about morality. Meaning, women can get pregnant from sex. Women need to really be known and feel close and comfortable and be able to be vulnerable in order to be even able to orgasm typically. And so there's something written into our actual bodily design for monogamy. That's good. Yeah, I mean, I don't know that I take it that serious that it's like, you know, hardwired into us. I think so much is just that's the bargaining chip and that women have. doesn't guarantee an orgasm. I mean, well, of course not. You gotta, you've got to work at it. I mean, and, you, you just said that when you, together. sorry, you just said that when you slept with those 300 women, you said, I had a hole in my heart. Mm. You know that's like one of the most 
evangelical Christian things people say, right? Well, that you saw me. I didn't know that. Yeah. That, that, they're, that they're trying to fill something, and so they're going out and they're trying to fill that void with something that could only be filled mm. with God. It's not easy to choose virtue. Like mm. what Ruslan was saying, like choosing a workout routine, choosing to eat healthy, like that can be difficult. But the more you do it, the easier it becomes, actually. And there's still hard days, but the more you choose the good, the more you build a habit of virtue of doing the good. And so I think that's the same. The same is true with relationships and with sex. The more you choose to do what is good, like choose to save sex for marriage or Mm -hmm. choose to not lust or choose to not engage with lustful behavior, like the more you're acclimating yourself. How is me doing something with my boyfriend that I only did something with him that's sacred? How is that bad? It was I never did it with anyone because else. Because are, are you Bible verses on him? this? Well, sure. sex is sacred in a sex is sacred in a marriage, not just in a relationship that you're in. Okay. So, I think so have I, you had I th- sex before? <laughs> I'm not going to answer that. I was engaged before, if that's your right. question. Actually, yeah, I was engaged yeah. before. So, so there was a, there was a before. ring, there was so a commitment, there was what? a ring, there was a commitment. But Let me finish my thought. We had a commitment too. Let me finish my thought. And we were together for a long time. So so did we though. We worked together for a long time and we had a commitment. Um, but no, to answer, what I think what Lila is saying is just that it's a commitment thing within the bounds of marriage. And it's mm-hmm. the commandments in the Bible and the verses that are there, they're not to like hurt you, they're there mm-hmm. for protection. And I think that's just all. You don't have to get defensive. I think Lila's just. Yeah, it's I'm not, not getting defensive. I say I, I completely agree with you. I have a Bible in my house. I'm very spiritual. Yeah. I'm very religious. I have a very, very good connection with God. God loves me no matter what you think. Okay. I, I, I know. Like, I think, love you. I know. So I know. Much. I know. So, he but loves like, us all at this point. I think so we're I we believe in the you. same things. But I don't. I think in it, being an accountant is a boring job. Just because yeah. you don't like my job. Mm-hmm doesn't mean you should bring it up. I don't bring up your job and say I don't like your job. Well, we're here to talk about dating and relationships. So that's why my dating and relationships are fine. But but I'll just say like, I just say say this that you know God does love you he loves Obviously. me he loves us all so much I totally agree with you on that and these laws about morality on sex and like just all the like the seven sins you brought up earlier Brian there are laws that God gives us like the ten commandments there's some no's and there's some yeses of what we're supposed to do but it's not crazy it's like yes it's a narrow path but it's doable and people can do it especially with God's love right and so the idea is I want you to be happy you know I want to be happy Ruslan we all want happiness at this table and the rules the rules about relationships and sex and marriage, these rules, there aren't a ton of them, but there's basic ones of fidelity and commitment. They're to make us happy in the end. Like, they're not to be a burden for you. When have I been infidel? When have I done anything that was infidelity? About, she wasn't talking about you That's being... I'm like, talking yeah. generally about... Okay, which so, one of the commandments have I broken? So can I, can I read you a verse? Yeah. Okay, so this Please. is Matthew chapter 5, verse 27. This is Jesus speaking. It's in red. He says, You have heard that it was said you shall not commit adultery, but I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lust for her has already committed adultery mm-hmm. with her in his heart. So Jesus is saying, society says adultery is wrong. You guys have heard it said in I'm the law. Not that, let me, let me, I've never let, committed. Let me yeah, no, I see what you're saying. And he's saying that it's way worse than that. He's saying that even if you've lusted in your heart or you've created content that causes other people to lust in your heart, that it's the same as adultery. That, that's what he's saying. So he's saying the standard is so much higher than any of us can admit. That's why I think this whole like, she's bad because she did this, but Adam had 300 bodies. Like, I think it's, we're all jacked up. We all need grace and we all need mercy. And that's the point of the gospel. That's the point of the good news is that Jesus is saying, you can't do it on your own. You, you're incapable. That's why you need Jesus. That's not what I get from that at all. It's saying oh, that it if a man... I'm saying what it says too. Uh-huh. If a man lusts elsewhere, that's when he's doing wrong. Right. So I'm not men doing lusting after wrong. you were married. That's a, men would love lust after me, whether I had OnlyFans or I was a lawyer or I was a real estate agent, just because I have but how you, I look. You that run, has nothing to do with me. But could you run your, to do with me. Could you run your business? Sorry that God made me look this way. God made me look <laughs> like this. Could you run? That has nothing to do with a man lusting after me and know, their decisions. Know. But I, think but I cannot know. choose their decisions God for them. Make me but, so okay. good but the, but it's could, not my fault. God made me hot, dude. But, it's but, not my fucking fault. But could you run your business? God without, made me look think, like this for a reason. The point, the point here is because you're saying you're a Christian and you want to follow. I'm a Catholic. Guys. That's a Christian. Oh. But you're saying you can. But can you run your business without lust? Wait, hold on. Let me just think. Can this you have guy. your business without lust? Kay- if we live in a society that's like heavy objectification on women's body parts. 
it's understandable why some women feel so insecure about their body parts. And that's, that goes back to the kind of our whole position on sex is just for two people in a forever lifelong commitment. Because then you're not comparing. You know, you're not constantly Word. comparing your body Word. to somebody else's body. Well, we, you guys have a daughter, is yes. that right? So I've got two sons. I hope we have a daughter. We'll see what God does. Yes. But I'll see. But um, what do you think for your daughter? Like, do you would you want your daughter to go down the path you've gone down with porn? No. Why is that? Um, because I feel like she should choose whatever you know career or pursuit she wants to pursue. If she found herself as an adult one day, having explored a variety of different options, and that was what she ultimately wanted to do, uh, it wouldn't really be my choice at that point. But for sure, I would rather her pursue you know art or music or. or but business. like a lot of daughters, like admire their mothers and want to be like their mothers. So let's say she's 17, about to turn 18, and she's like, I want to be like my mom. Like, she's successful. My dad seems to really love her and, you know, is committed to her. I want to do porn. How would that make you feel? I mean, I would want her to do it in the safest way possible, and I would want to make sure that I could help her if she needed that help. But I'd like Adam, like, I would rather her do something else. Like, when I got into porn, I had already had a degree. I'd had multiple different jobs, and I was super broke. And I, like, this wasn't my first choice, but I was like, okay, I'm just going to take photos, and then I'll have the freedom to do whatever else I want with my life. And that is how it started. And then we started dating, and we just... We were already like making porn in our personal life. Like we'd fuck and then we'd film it, and it was kind of just like, but why if there's, not? If there's nothing wrong with porn, why would you want her to do other things first? Why would you have any issue at all with her going into it? I just think that it's kind of limiting for the future of your life afterwards. You know, like we don't really have any doubt about the fact that her degree would be kind of useless to her at this point in terms of getting into another career. And you see girls dealing with that all the time. I just don't think that it's like necessarily a good thing for a girl to get into because she's 18 and she doesn't feel like getting a job like it just is not you know like the reason why me and her got into it is legitimately because well especially in her case I and mean, she had a super normal regular job and she just wanted to achieve some degree of financial freedom and to be able to do what she wanted with her time and you know I got into it not really necessarily having to do it but just because I wanted to you know make content with her and but we enjoy it you know but like porn aside if my daughter was like wanted to explore her sexuality like I don't think that's a bad thing like I don't think that's unethical but you, you know? just you guys just both acknowledge you wouldn't want your daughter to do that it wouldn't be it's my not ideal my first choice thing. the point about the mon monogamy is more about marriage in terms of your body is sacred and beautiful and reserved for someone else and that would include not just actual sex acts but it would include showing your body um, you know pornography or sending sexual videos or things like that to anyone else outside of the marriage and I think monogamy you know the research proves that people who are uh, sexually intimate before marriage are more likely to divorce actually. if you look at like so the, the reason, history the reason we're of ours, is all girls being naked and then like the history the research is all like covid being real which wasn't even real oh so my God, bro, shut up okay that's gonna get us in trouble <laughs> yeah i don't um, i mean it's not that's it's true. not that's it's, the truth it's the it's a me and you have the same core values mm -hmm. we're just Dude, out of just agreement of mm -hmm. we don't see it the same way well, I think that that would be different core values. Because no, it's not. Because who did you vote for? Um, we just move on. I, I don't think it has to do with who we vote I for. Do, because I we voted for the same person. So we you guys don't have the same, same values because you believe in no, something. No, she just she doesn't she understand just, what I'm saying. There's a difference between politics and, va and core values. There's a huge difference. You can vote. You can ha be Republican and not have traditional core values. But I do Clearly, have traditional core But you core don't values. have traditional you, core that values. You, you don't know of. You I don't do know that because you do You do only fans. So that doesn't make you have traditional core values. That's not what you could be Republican. I'm not judging you based on your job. I don't do OnlyFans. I'm not I, judging you based on your job. I, I, but just because of your job doesn't make you a traditional. Well, doing OnlyFans yeah. doesn't make you traditional. And here's the thing: like I can, she, I can she, never, what you think. I can never, That's and I, I would know. never judge your heart because I only God can see the heart. But what we're talking about is actions and, you know, dating and relationships. That's what this podcast is about. And the point we're trying to make here is that pornography at large has been a menace to society. It leads I, I don't to, consider myself finish, in let porn. Let me just finish for a second. It, it leads to divorce. It leads to addiction. It has led to the proliferation of, like, a lot of sexual brokenness and deviancy, broken relationships. And so, you know, part of the message is, like, let's be the change we want to see out there in the world. And I want happiness for you. Like, I want you to have that marriage you dream of. I think that many people want that. And the way, the path to that, I believe, is 
pursuing virtue and love. And that's a choice that includes self-control in not just like how we behave with other people, but how we make money. Because if we're making money through selling pictures of our bodies to incite lust in other people, that's gonna ultimately, I don't think, set you up for happiness. And I want you to be happy. I want you to have that future marriage that you desire. Well, I'm sorry that you don't think I'm a happy person. Well, I think what you're saying is you want to be married. Saying. Yeah, because you said you want me to be happy. She's just giving you, like, sound motherly advice. I understand <laughs> that, but, like, I, I'm going to listen to God, and I'm going to follow my own path, and that doesn't have to do have anything to do with your path but that doesn't mean i don't have a spiritual connection with god i know that i'm not have Catholic. a spiritual connection but like yeah. you're you're debating me because of like oh i hope i hope happiness for you in the future like i'm good well i think you want I'm to get good. married we're on you're... different paths though we're on different paths that, yeah it doesn't true. mean that i'm yeah. not a child of god or i don't pray or i don't have connection with god of course you're a child and of God. And it's a little not, bit judgmental. Yeah, I, of course you're a child of God. I'm yeah. just I'm speaking uh, to, I think what you're saying is you desire marriage, right? But I will not settle for marriage. That's the thing. No one and I, and I don't care if it happens tomorrow at 47, as long as I'm happy in the long run. And it's not about what I'm doing. It's on my path that God put me on. And you are on a completely different path that God put you on. Christy. I don't think anyone's saying any of this stuff you think we're saying about you. Okay, God sure. speaks yeah. through people. Okay. It's possible God may be trying to speak to you through Lila, mm -hmm. who's married with kids. You said that's something you desire. And I think you're doing a lot of projecting okay. of what you think we're saying. And we're not saying 95% of what you think we're saying. I actually think the opposite. I think she's I just think kind of coming from... You guys are projecting on me. Yeah, and I, I think I everyone think... just has their own opinion. And mm. Is it a sin to... Shoot porn. <laughs> is yes. it a yes. sin? Yes, yeah. it is. Which commandment is that? Sins, I just sins, wait, wait. Well, sins can be forgiven. Of you just course, go to church. Of course but, they can be. Thank God for that because I'm a sinner. Sin. I actually don't think it's a sin. I, I'm just shooting a reality show with my boyfriend that people are paying for. <laughs> By reality show, do you mean like porn? Like what do you... I, I, people are paying to see what me and my boyfriend, he's not my ex-boyfriend, but me and my boyfriend <laughs> were doing behind closed doors. People are going to pay. People pay for the dumbest fucking things ever. But that's porn. That's not reality TV. So the, the reason it's we... It's the reality of my Adam life and if people want to pay to see the reality of my life, I don't care. The question is, is it a sin? Yeah, is what he asked. Sins can all be forgiven and I... Of course. Yeah, but don't you need to like, if you're trying to be a godly person, don't you need to make an effort to stop sinning? No, 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 if you're... How am I sinning if I'm only hooking up with one man and we're talking about monogamy? Let, let me just explain because I, I think it can be maybe confusing, especially our, our society is so pornified and like sexual objectification is everywhere. It's in advertisements, it's in movies, it's everywhere. But the reason porn, is, looking at porn or making porn is a sin is because of lust. And you're either in. I'm not in porn, I'm in OnlyFans. Let me just finish really quick. And you're either intentionally creating content to get someone to masturbate and lust or you are doing the masturbating and lusting. They're already and doing that. the reality is, like, the, de the design, like, God's design is that sex is for unity and procreation. It's for unity between two people to be emotionally bonded, pair bonded, in I love, very connected. And then in addition, to be able to bring life boyfriend. into the world because sex can do that. And one of the reasons, you know, we, Ruslan kind of mentioned this earlier a little bit, but one of the reasons, this hasn't been, the statistic hasn't been shared yet at this table, but there's 2,500 abortions a day in this country. The reason we have the sky high I've number. I've never had a, a pregnancy scare in my life. The, the reason so we have did. the sky high number is because people don't take sex seriously enough. Mm -hmm. They think sex sure. is just like a recreational thing they'll do. It, it doesn't have to do with commitment and marriage. And so people get pregnant because they're having sex when they're not committed, and then they choose abortion. So it I leads to, to all, these other, what I'm doing. all these other problems. <laughs> yeah. I think there's never a context so where it's okay to kill an innocent right. child. Never. No matter, like, if you have an abusive partner, Usually it's the abusive partner that wants to kill the baby, actually. A lot of abortions are coerced when there is an abusive partner, statistically. But the reality is, like, if you, no matter your circumstances, if you're with an abusive partner, if you're, you know, you don't like the guy at all, that doesn't justify taking the life of an innocent baby. I, I never said fault. it did. Oh, continue with your point. You were saying what? I mean, I, I'm very conservative. I've had opposite views on this kind of stuff, but I've also mm -hmm. been in a very abusive relationship mm -hmm. where well let's not shift the goalposts you were you were I'm saying that, that. You, you were saying if people were 
uh, financially they weren't in a good position, mm -hmm. do you feel that that would be a circumstance under which abortion is acceptable? When they can't afford to have a child? Well, you mentioned something about finances, mm -hmm. like if someone's not in a good financial position, yeah. You and you said that... They don't uh, have insurance, they don't have a job. So, but yeah, under those circumstances, do you feel that that's an appropriate, uh, like a, mm -hmm. a good reason to get an abortion? I do, if you can't afford to give well, this then child you're, a life. Well, you're necessarily, you're not pro-life. Mm -hmm. That's pro-choice. Well, That's a pro-choice position. Yeah. And there's two things with that pro-choice position. Like, first of all, if you're really struggling, a lot of people are struggling, right? And they get pregnant, they're like, what do I do? First of all, there are hundreds of thousands, if not millions of families that really want to adopt and they can't because they're on these long waiting lists to adopt. Second of all, there are resources that a lot of people don't even know about, which is so sad, right, that people don't know about them. There are thousands of pregnancy resource centers in this country that offer free care, prenatal care, care for after the baby's born, help with housing, help with financial assistance. So I think the, me the pro-life message is there's always a way, you know, there's always a this way is to not choose the life for the baby I feel like you're looking at me and like, I didn't talk about this. Well, I'm, I'm kind of trying to look at your friend, but I'm, I apologize, I'm not trying to okay. look this early at you. She's <laughs> looking at the direction. <laughs> <laughs> look, this direction. Uh, let's, no, let's, saying. we didn't really. But there's always a way there's always a way to choose life sure i do think body count matters with the clarification that i believe like what you were saying a lot christy about god's love like i do think that in god's universe when we say sorry sincerely for our sin and i'm a catholic so you go to confession you sincerely say sorry for your sin you say i'm not going to do this again and you commit to that your sin is wiped away so even if you've had a thousand sexual partners to god like he has Hello. he can wipe you clean because of that's the power of god's grace and his love and jesus christ's death on the cross is wiping away any sin so i think that's an important clarification in the conversation of does body count yeah, matter sure. there's a spiritual reality that's so beautiful Could because no matter what you've done you can change and, and you can be redeemed and that's incredible that's that's saving grace for me personally it's saving grace for everybody at this table and just, just and one we'll caveat everything she said is spot on but I would just say the only caveat is sometimes we don't get to choose the consequences mm. and sometimes you can make bad decisions give your life to Jesus and then there's still consequences that's true. You natural consequences but I'm not if there's something like physically wrong like a cleft lip or oh, you know sure. you mentioned like a condition after pregnancy and there's a correction that needs to take place that involves plastic surgery it's totally understandable um, but generally speaking I do think body accept you know body acceptance for bodies that are striving to be healthy and care for themselves is a good thing because everybody's different and i think there's someone for everyone that's called to be married the way that they are provided they're striving to be healthy sleeping working out eating healthy and things like that so i think it's a good thing in culture to you know not to be judgmental of people that choose that but it's good to celebrate natural beauty mm -hmm. and i do think that unfortunately today because of porn in part and also just you know digital media and all this stuff there are these sort of inflated beauty standards that are not not just not realistic but they're actually not the only kind of beauty you know there are all kinds of beauty and my opinion is that any woman who's seeking to be healthy and and personally living a beautiful interior life is beautiful like she has a unique beauty and there's someone for her especially if she's called to marriage so that's the hope yeah. for all of us, I, you know, yeah. regardless of I completely of how we look. agree. I think it totally depends on your goals going into it. Because if you're going into like a dating app experience with, okay, I want to have a hookup or I'm expecting sex before commitment or things like that, you're going to get a totally different outcome, I think, typically speaking, than if you go into it saying, I'm dating to ultimately find the one to marry. And that's the person that shares my values I'd raise kids with, you know, I'd want to like build a family life project with. So it, that really, I think, is a natural filter when you look at who are the options. And then you'll also find like, yeah, dating apps are powerful and can, I, met, I know a ton of people who met their spouses through dating apps, so mm -hmm. they can be really effective. But then couple that with you, are you putting yourself out there like going to places that you think you could meet that future mm -hmm. spouse too? I think that combination is, can maximize success. But if you're just getting together with people and you're like having sex on that first date or just you know sleeping together before marriage, you're, that's, that's a different value set that you're engaging. And that you know what is what is the goal what is the goal of of your dating i think it has to be the question of every person getting into it i actually completely agree with you and isabella mm -hmm. i think i've been misunderstood by both of you but that's actually how i go into every single potential date and person that i give a chance to date mm -hmm. that's awesome you were sleeping with all these girls and you were unfulfilled and that kind and that that experience of realizing, hey, this isn't fulfilling me. Like hooking up with all these girls is not fulfilling me. And then you fell in love with Lena and you want to build a life with her alone. I think that shows like men are 
I know this is unpopular. People don't like saying this, but I think men are made for monogamy. I do. And I think that, you know, Ruslan, my husband, there's a ton of men living that. Maybe they're not on social media talking about it all the time, but I know t- dozens and dozens of men who are living that. Yeah, and, and they're it, it, happy that way. You know, they're to, fulfilled to, that way. How do we make men great again? I think men are already made to be great innately. I think they're made in the image of God. And I think that men pursuing virtue and you can't per- pursue virtue if you don't assent to a higher morality. Like if you say, I get to decide whatever morality is and I'm just gonna do what I feel like, you're never gonna be who you're made to be. You're always gonna be limited by your next impulse, your next lust, your next immediate fleeting desire, lifelong happiness. And the, all the social data proves this too. Lifelong happiness comes through growing in virtue and having for those called to marriage, that lifelong committed exclusive monogamous marriage. And I want that for men, I want that for women, and we just have to say this openly and like not denigrate men and say, oh, men can't do it, or women are, you know, are well, sluts and can't do it. No, Matthew we can all rise above donated. and do it. Being, I think you used the word desensitized at one point, Lena, and I think that we are sensitive as women and as men to when we're in a marriage especially, or any relationship really, to that other person being with someone else. Because I think, again, back to monogamy, like I think that is, we're naturally wired to want that. And so the the thing is, like what Ruslan is saying, and like my in our marriage, it's like how do we respect and, ch- and like protect that vulnerability? Yeah. Because we don't want to make the other person jealous. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't want to create space for that in the relationship. And that's where fidelity and boundaries can be so powerful to protect that really precious thing, which is your intimacy. I mean, there's nothing more precious in my life besides my faith than my my intimacy. And I I know that that you know you've said that that's really valuable to you guys too. So. I think with the chivalry thing, I, I get, I hear people, women complain a lot, like, oh, men aren't chivalrous anymore. I also hear men complain that women aren't being, like, ladylike or feminine anymore. So there's, like, all these complaints. Basically, I think in some ways, especially you see this on the internet, but the sexes are at war, right? Mm-hmm. Like, we don't know how to be harmonious together. And I think the through line, there's two through lines, morality, like those guardrails of like what is a good, what is it to behave well towards each other is one thing. And then the second thing is growing in virtues, like how do we grow as human beings so that we can try to behave well with each other and love each other well, because otherwise we're always going to be fighting and there's always going to be this either competitiveness or this anger or this, just always this disunity, but the unity can be found, I believe, through appreciating men for being like truly great men, which would include self-control, honor, humility, drive towards what is good, service of others, women, similar things, but also nurture, love of children, love of uh, family, eagerness to serve other people and love other people Mm -hmm. instead of just being concerned with ourselves and our own ideas and and goals. And if we focus on those things as men and women, we'll be much more harmonious together, I think, and have a much happier society. Like I was saying earlier, the social media aspect of things, like my dad was a pilot. They... I uncovered their box of like love letters to each other. Like it was just so different Mm -hmm. then. Like, but I think, I think it is possible today. I think it's hard. Mm -hmm. I do think it's hard. I think there's a lot of people that are, you know, because of social media, because of the sexual revolution. You know, I know we've talked a lot about porn, but I would say because of porn, all these things, it's a lot harder to have what yeah. you're describing, but it is possible. So you guys and give me hope. That's good. <laughs> well, but, it, but, it, but we're not like just lucky. I think, yeah. I mean, we were very blessed. I think they're like, we were, I think, I don't know about yeah. your family background, but I can say like my parents are together. Like that is a privilege yeah. I have. Yeah. Um, but I will also say like, it is possible for everyone, but we just have to be that change we want to mm-hmm. see. We have to choose it. Like if we want to yeah. be that with a man who's going to be that provider, that protector, who's mm-hmm. going to be a man of honor, then our role would be to be that woman of honor who wants to cherish motherhood, you know, mm-hmm. and not prioritize careerism over it and who's preparing for a life like that. I because also it will want- maximize that opportunity for us. Right. Well, you yeah. know, it's like too powerful too is we can learn from other people's experiences because I do think like you sharing your experience Adam like other people sharing their experience like hey this is how I lived and it didn't make me happy and so then I wanted to you know get married or whatever it is I do think that people don't have to sow their wild oats like I think that is a mythology in our culture today of like oh when you're young you're promiscuous and then you settle down I know so many couples who were young and they were each other's first and they settled down and they have this beautiful life that they built together. Now, that's not everybody's story, obviously, mm-hmm. but I think that we need to kind of make that normal again because mm-hmm. right now, if you're a virgin 
And, you know, you get married, you know, I got married at 30 and I was a virgin and people were like, no one was like, oh, you're so crazy. You're so weird. Like, how could that be? And it's like, why don't we normalize that Mm -hmm. instead of saying it's weird? I mean, literally people get made fun of for being virgins, especially men, actually, which is so sad. It's true. And it should be the opposite. It should be like, no, let's celebrate that. Not to shame people who aren't, but let's celebrate living that people say it's traditional but living that that way because it leads to and has led to so many beautiful marriages like your parents and you know my parents and other people who have those role models do you want a woman that wants to be a wife and a mother that that's a high priority. I thought this was going to be an easy yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, he doesn't want to get married. That's well, thing. then well, then I guess it makes I'm sense. Not <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Then the whole you pay for the I coffee. Could have, makes I could more have sense. I could have like a long-term partner. But uh, I'm not. In, I, I don't want to get married. Just you because want kids? Of, I'm. I'm strongly leaning towards yes, but I have to, uh, of course, find the right person to uh, have kids with. So. But you don't want to marry their mother. What's that? You don't want to marry the mother of your children. No, because of the state of uh, the marriage laws and divorce laws in this country, it's. Uh, I don't think it's a good move financially mm-hmm. for a, a man. Prenuptial agreement. Yeah. What if you had a prenup? Well, I think. Looking at Kevin Costner, he had a uh, prenuptial agreement with his wife. I don't know the full details of it, but a lot of men, my understanding is pre, uh, prenups are not bulletproof. True. All it, I mean, hmm. conceivably, the woman could say, you know, let's say you were having a contentious divorce. The woman could easily say that she agreed to the prenup under duress and therefore it's invalid. Why would you trust someone enough to be the mother of your children, but you wouldn't trust them enough to marry them? Yeah, but I mean, how many people get married and have kids with people only for it to not work out? But do you think that was wise? For them, well, I- They I, just I, weren't a great judge of character, it turns out. Yeah, but I mean, or it could, it could be the case that maybe people, people change. Mm-hmm. Can, I, can I propose something? Uh, sure. It, it seems like every other facet of life learning to drive, getting a degree, sure. getting certified to cut hair. People have to go through some sort of process to get mm-hmm. some sort of training and get some sort of certification, but the two most important decisions that we will ever make, who we have children with and who we will marry, we think we're just going to make it on a whim, no planning, no education, no systems, no target, and it's just going to work out. I don't well, of know. Course people You're work. conservative though, right? Absolutely. So I don't know. That seems like a bit too much government intervention. Oh, I said nothing about government. Oh, okay. I don't think well, the government should be involved. Well, no, but you, you were mentioning like a driver's license, like having a light. Well, I think you're just saying that there's like a longer a process that goes there's into these things. It. Oh, okay. I'm not talking about the government. I'm, I think the church should be doing this stuff. I think people should oh, be in communities sure, sure, sure. where there's older couples mentoring <laughs> them that are decades ahead, helping them walk through this. Well, I'm look. I'm an egalitarian. As when it comes to paying for the first date. I'm an egalitarian. You're an enigma, bud. I believe, <laughs> I believe in equality. I mean, that's that's. I don't think that's equality in terms of equal dignity. I mean, it depends what you mean by equality. Well, but like you don't pink. expect the woman to be a man, right? Or maybe hopefully not. Okay. Hopefully, not. <laughs> shout out Gorlock. No. Nope. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I don't expect her. No, like obviously, there's just there are going to be certain roles that I I'm going to fall into. Uh, I mean, I mean, I I get why a lot of people are jaded today because divorce rates are so high and there's so much broken, so many broken families. But like Ruslan was saying, there are systems, there are things you can do to really prepare and and date like very intentionally to have maximize the best outcomes possible. And people still have free will, so it's not like your spouse sure. is never going to make a right. mistake. Because I make mistakes in my marriage, like you're going to make mistakes. But by really preparing for marriage and really getting to know the person that you're going to marry before marrying them, get to know their community, their family, all these things. I think it, it makes sense to make, take the risk for the sake of the kids too. the risk of saying, yes, I'm going to commit to you for life no matter what. Sure. Well, I mean, just to bring it back to the paying for the first date thing, uh, (laughs) I, as a guy, like if I'm first going on a date with a girl, I don't, I don't know her yet. So I don't know, if she's worth it. In the same way that women are not obliged to sleep with a guy on a first date, I feel like I'm not obliged to pay on a first you date. Can get, paying for someone's coffee is like sleeping with them? No, it's obviously different, but I, I, I don't personally see the, understand the pushback against equally investing into the start of a relationship. Mm-hmm. And just me personally as a preference, I do, I actually like it when women simp 
for me. <laughs> like I like it when a woman is that into me. Mm -hmm. In fact, it would be, not only should it be a uh, split, I think it's better if she pays for me. That's some G, that's some gangster shit. I think part right of, of like, I think no, I like are, it. I'm just I think a little girl here, I don't know about you, but all of us, at least four, can agree that we disagree with you. I think part that's of, fun. I think part of the things that society has normalized is kind of like marriage isn't what it used to be. I think people don't take it seriously. I think 53 years of no-fault divorce in the United States has been completely to our detriment, where people kind of just like enter marriage and they feel like they can get out anytime that they want. So I think that having no value of marriage leads people to think that like, oh, well, I'm looking at marriage as like a contract. Sure. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, I, I guess if I could determine if a girl was actually like, if she was traditional, let's say, she had a low body count, she wasn't promiscuous, she was feminine, et cetera, under those circumstances, I'd be much more open to paying for the first date. However, like if I'm dating a woman who's 30, She's professional, she's got a career. Like, it, to me, it, it, the, the whole reason men used to pay was because women were not, like, out there making money. But if I go on a date with an attorney, and actually, I think I did went back when, long time ago, if I go on a date with a woman who's an attorney, let's say she's out earning me, why ought I to pay for her under those circumstances? Do you she's want her to stay an attorney working full time when she's a mother of your kids and just do that continuously? It depends on my financial situation. Uh, if, if I, were, I think I'm in a financial spot where if I decided to have kids, I would be able to provide and have her just take care of the kids. I would be able to do that. But if I wasn't, then I might be more interested in her continuing to work. Mm. Meaning you'd be the breadwinner and she would be the, and you take care of the baby. She'd be the breadwinner, excuse me, and you no, take I'd care of the babies. No, no, I'd, I mean, if, very few women would be satisfied with that arrangement, mm -hmm. but. Uh, but do you want I, that? I wouldn't, no, not really. Although it would be kind of fucking awesome to like, if she's just rich like some billionaire heiress, yeah, I'm gonna quit my. Sh but then she doesn't have to work. She could still be the mom. Okay, and fair, be stay sure. at home mom or, or I'll, be the stay the I'll be the stay at home mom not that you that? can't Speaking be a mom when you moms, work but I'm gotta, saying that it's dip. hard we'll, when you're we'll yeah. can you give us five minutes <laughs> yeah, yeah, cool? yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll wrap up here uh, I know we're going a little late so uh, no, uh, speaking of kids <laughs> let's get home yeah, yeah, today yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would say if you're as a man you're dead set on getting married the, the least that you can do is make sure of these three things she does not have a child from another man she does not have any cluster B personality disorder or, or other mental health issues. And she's either a virgin or has a low body count. I think those are probably the best circumstances for marriage. Yeah, I'd agree. Well, if, but it, I would she's, just caution, she's if, if you're going into it without striving for goodness and health yourself, it can, it'll still be a train. It can still be a train wreck, even if sure. she's all those things. So it, it just it always takes two to tango in a marriage. Like you have to both give every, give everything you can to be the best and to be the healthiest. My last word is marriage is awesome. But as Isabella, a lot of people said at this table, it's about trying to be the best you can be, serving God, serving other people, and then dating really intentionally. You know, not dating for lust, not dating for just hanging out, but dating it for is this someone I could marry ultimately, and striving to be the kind sure. of person you'd want to marry.